How long can the can the va- the growth to value shift and the value run historically go? It can go a long time, Brian. And you know, I was on your show last August, and I was talking about energy, and it was almost like a curse word last August to say, you know, look, it might be a good time to move out of some of your tech positions and move into energy. And, you know, what we've seen here is we've seen a huge move up. You're just talking about uh, oil. The XLE is up big this year um, at $68 a barrel as we're recording this right now or it's live right now. And, you know, the the thing, the the, the thought on Wall Street right now is maybe this whole trend is transitory. You know, big tech's going to be the place to be like it was the last decade. And we're having this move up in inflation right now uh, is the Fed says transitory. It's not something that's going to last a long time. But if you look at a, a value cycle, uh, historically, it could last as long as 33 months. We're only six months into this. You know, it was really only in November when we first got that vaccine news that all of a sudden we start to see that big rotation out of big tech, or I call long duration assets, right? Anything where you're waiting for profits yeah. that can be priced in for, in some cases, like 100 years if you're Tesla. Um, and you're really seeing money move out of that part of the market into more cyclical cyclical positions that benefit from really profits reaccelerating. That's what's happening right now. Yeah, and, and we've shown that the gap between the oil price and oil stocks is this huge gap. Usually, when oil's at you know 68 or 70, oil stocks are somewhere up there as well. They're not, maybe because to your point, it's a dirty word. ESG people have dumped it, but it's not just that. The valuation gap between, say, the Russell growth sector and the Russell value sector is still historically high. That's going to come down, you think, at some point? Yeah, it has to. It has to. Because, look, at the end of the day, the market's a slave to earnings. And at the end of the day, you know, money's going to find where profits are accelerating. And last year, you know, it was the perfect storm, right? We were all locked in at home. Um, if you're Peloton, you just thank the, the market gods that, look, you're going to come out with a bike this year. We're going to go public um, and everyone's going to have to be locked in at home. So they're going to buy your bike like perfect storm. Right. But now we have the exact opposite. People are going outside again. You know, people are going to go on trips again. People are going on vacation. So all that money is going to flow into basically being outside, not inside. And who benefits the most from that? All the stocks that got hammered last year and all the profits that yeah. are going to accelerate are going to be in those areas. And the other thing is, you have to think about last year. So what do we, Ryan, is, we gotta go, what do we do? Do we, do we buy oil and gas stocks here? What are we buying? What are we doing? Yes, the trend is not over. Uh, you haven't missed it. Yeah, I would, add, I would add to energy here. I'd add to financials here. I'd add to materials. Um, you know, anywhere that's cyclical, Brian, you've got to have in your portfolio. And also the dollar's weakening. You know, money's going around the world again. You just mentioned Europe. Europe's running hot. He said it should have been red this morning. Uh, I'd have money globally as well right now because next year GDP growth is going to be even faster in Europe than it is in the U.S. So you've got to be global here. You've got to be in value positions. You've got to have cyclical positions. You've got to move out of having everything in tech, which I see most portfolios are still the portfolio of the last 10 years, not the next 10 years.